All right, 11.3. So more about angles. Let's start with Common Core, as usual. So grade 7, Common Core Standards, we find use facts about supplementary, complementary, vertical, and adjacent angles in a multi-step problem to write and solve simple equations for an unknown angle. So basically everything we're going to do, this goes on in the 7th grade curriculum. So you, you want to become a master uh, um, so that you can teach those um, that are just below you in, in their knowledge of this stuff. All right, so here we go. We're going to start with intersection of two lines and something specifically called vertical angles. I don't know if you've heard of that term before. Vertical angles, I think they should have come up with, I always have my opinion, but um, they should have come up with a different word because the word I would have come up with is diagonal angles because that's really what we're talking about. Vertical angles are diagonal. So it would be like angle two and angle four there. Those are what they mean by vertical angles. So I would just say, well, they're diagonal. So those, those two would be vertical angles. And also, one and three would be vertical angles. So diagonal, vertical angles. And not only that, so you can see they're, they're saying exactly what I just told you. One and three, two and four are diagonal angles, vertical angles. And what do you think about what angle... What do you think about angle two and four? Do, does angle two look like it's more than 90 or less than 90? More than 90. Yeah, more than 90 degrees, huh? Angle two looks like it's more than 90 degrees. So it's more than 90 degrees. And how about angle four? Angle four, what do you think about angle four? It's also more than 90 degrees, isn't it? And they're both more than a, than a right angle? Do they look like they're equal? Yes. They do, don't they? In fact, they are. They're equal. And that's what they're going to say on the next slide. Basically, vertical angles are congruent. Remember, that's geometry's word for identical. Equal, same thing. So vertical angles, so I'll just write it here. Diagonal angles, always equal. Diagonal angles are always equal. Now, I don't want to just say that. We, we want to use logic, right? That's, that's what's interesting about math, I think, is um, we can actually work it out. Let's, let's suppose, let me just make up a number. Let's suppose angle two there, this angle right here, is, um, I don't know, like 120 degrees. I'll just make up a number. Let's say it's like, it looks like it's something more than 90, right? So I'll just say 120. So if that really is 120 degrees... How could we prove, using logic, that angle 4 is the same thing, is also 120 degrees? Because that's what they're saying, right? They're saying those diagonal angles are always equal. How do they know that? Why does that, why does that have to be the case? Any ideas? What could we do there to prove to get to that step logically? We prove it. So, you know. I think this side is 120, the other side is 60, so that is added to 180. You're saying this has got to be 60 right there because it's got to add to be um, 180? How do, you, how do you know? Uh, I know what you mean. You're, yeah, straight line. Perpendicular actually means uh, 90. But I know what you mean. It means you mean straight line. The line's straight. Yeah, exactly. That's a straight line, huh? Exactly right. They, remember, remember, that, remember where this whole angle degree thing came from? They said that all the way around is how much? 360. 360. Why did they come up with that? Yeah, the rotation us around the sun. Back in the day when they were doing angles, they thought we rotated the sun about 360. Now we know it's closer to 365 days. So they just said, okay, all the way around will be 360. Just made that up. So once they made that up, then everything follows logically from that. So halfway around, meaning straight line, is 180, isn't it? So, th so this right here has to make 180. A straight line always makes 180, yeah. So Silvino's perfectly right. That other one's got to be 60, all right? And I'm, I'm sure I cut him off halfway through the logic. And then where do we go from there? Savina, what would be your next step? So that's got to be 60. Um, the four is kind of like congruent, so it should be 120 as well. Yeah, right. Because these two right here 
Uh, the, another straight line. It's the other line, huh? They, they are the right side of the other line, so those two have to make 180. And so this has got to be 120, and it's, they got to be, there it is. There's the proof. Those diagonal angles have to be equal, don't they? It's just simple logic. So yeah, diagonal angles called vertical um, have to be equal to each other. Good. All right. You're able to reason logically at 9 a.m. in the morning on a Wednesday morning. All right. That's good. Let's go on. So now we're going to just give you a bunch of terminology. So um, you can write these down in your notes or it'll be on the YouTube. I'm going to go kind of fast because I, I want to get to the homework, where, which is going to be more beneficial to you. Um, so I'm not going to write all those words. Basically, supplementary angles add to be 180. That's all I'm going to say. So two angles are supplementary if they total 180 degrees. So it's like, it's like what we were just observing with a straight line, what Silvino was saying exactly, a straight line. So if you have, um, if you have one angle here that's, that's, say, 70 degrees, then the other angle would have to be 110. They are supplementary. They, they together make a straight line. They make 180. And then down here, complementary angles, they make 90, meaning they make a right angle together. So say one of them is 30, the other would have to be 60, and together they make 90. They're called complementary. So supplementary angles total 180, complementary angles total 90. So a couple vocabulary words there. And then... Now we're going to have two lines cut by a transversal. So these, these are our two lines here. We have these two lines, and then we have a transversal cutting across them. Transversal, trans just means across, whenever that's in front of a word. Transport means to go move across town, right? Transatlantic flight means across the Atlantic Ocean. So trans means across, so transversal is a line that just goes across the other two lines. So, okay, so we're going to talk about some specific names for types of angles that relate to each other. First off, interior angles. I think that one's pretty obvious. It just means these four angles that are inside the two lines, right? They're interior, they're inside. So that'd be one, uh, three, four, five, and six. They're all interior. And then we've got exterior, which are the four that are outside. So these two and these two, one, two, seven, and eight, are all exterior angles. They are outside of the two lines. Now, coming on down to the lower box, al alternate interior is our next category. Alternate interior angles. What are those? So putting together... The terminology here. They're alternate. Now, what does alternate mean? It means on opposite sides of the transversal. So this whole diagram we're pretty into in geometry. These two lines cut by a transversal. Alternate angles are those that are on opposite sides of the transversal. So the tra you know, it's like it's like a lot of those old movies. What is it, Romeo and Juliet and the a bunch of other ones where, you know, they marry the boy from the opposite side of the tracks, the other side of town kind of thing. That's how you can think of the transversal. So with the transversal, we're talking about angles like angle um, three and angle six, as it says right there. Those are alternate interior angles because they're on opposite sides, right? Angle three is on the left side of the transversal. Six is on the right side. They're on opposite sides of the tracks. And they're both interior. They're both inside the two lines, aren't they? So they're alternate interior angles. And not only them, but four and five. See how four and five are the same deal? So four and five, as they say right there, are also alternate interior angles, right? Because four and five, you know, four is on the right side of the transversal, five is on the left, and they're both interior. They're both inside the two lines. So they're alternate interior also. Is that good? Feel free to speak up if you want me to clarify more on anything. And then coming on down, alternate exterior. See what we're talking about with those. Alternate, that'd be like one and eight, as they say right there. 
See how those two, again, they're, they're alternate. One's on, they're on opposite sides of the, of the tracks. One's on the left, eight's on the right, and they're both exterior. So they're alternate, so they're both outside of the two lines, aren't they? They're alternate exterior, and so are what other two angles? Yeah, two and seven, as they say right there. Two and seven. Those are also outside of the two lines, and they're alternate, right side, left side. Alternate exterior. Okay, finally, last category, corresponding angles. Corresponding. Now, what that means, that means the same position of the intersection. So imagine, like, these are, uh, these are two intersections. You know, as you're driving down the street, you know, you go from one signal light to the next signal light. Those are two intersections. And you look in the upper right-hand corner and, and then upper right-hand corner. So, like, two and six would be what we call corresponding, meaning they're in the same spot. They're both in the upper right-hand corner of their intersections. So they correspond to each other. And there's a whole bunch of those, right? So likewise, three, or no, that's five, sorry, five, is, in, is corresponding with which other angle? Yeah, one, because they're both upper left, upper left for their intersections, aren't they? Let's keep going. So what about, what about four? Who corresponds with four? Eight, because they're both lower right, lower right. Making sense. And then finally, what we got left? Uh, three and seven, lower left, lower left. So those are all what we call corresponding. They're in the same spot of the intersection. All right, so there's all those definitions. So what is that? What, what are we going to do with all that? Well, so if you didn't get all that down, it'll be on the YouTube. You can check later. So um, specifically, we like to take those two lines and make them parallel. See how all of a sudden, see back here, how the two lines were not parallel, they were headed in different directions, you know? But now all of a sudden, we're gonna line them up parallel. That's really what we're interested in, is when that transversal cuts across two parallel lines, a whole bunch of nice things happen. Specifically, corresponding angles are equal, alternate interior angles are equal, and alternate exterior angles, basically all those categories end up becoming equal. And you can tell by looking at the two little purple angles they have. One and five. Tell me, what are one and five? Are they alternate interior, alternate exterior, or corresponding? corresponding. Yeah, they're both upper left, upper left, aren't they? Those are corresponding angles. And they sure look equal, don't they? Right? They both look like they're a little more than 90, and they are equal. They, in fact, are. You can prove it. We won't, we won't go through all the logic to prove it again, but they are... They are Equal, when the, when the lines are parallel. So if the lines are parallel, you can tell those two angles have to be equal, don't they? So not only those, but also, let me draw it again down here. Not only are those two equal, but this one, you know who he's going to be equal to? He's going to, let, let me put the numbers here. What was it? One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. So angle three there is who is his, so we already did corresponding. Who is alternate interior with him? Yeah, three and six are alternate interior angles, aren't they? They're on opposite sides of the tracks there, the transversal, and they're both interior. Those are alternate interior angles, and they have to be equal too. They when the lines are parallel, those are equal, aren't they? They both look like they're less than 90, right? They are the same angle opening when the two lines are parallel. Now, sometimes it's hard to see those. We're going to see as we get into the homework, they're going to give us really fancy diagrams. They're going to turn it all about and make it more tricky. And so let me help you. One thing I discovered years ago that's helpful to students to spot those is, to, as I, as I said, look for the Z angles. So here's what I mean. You know, if you make a Z... A Z makes two angles, right? It makes this angle and this angle. Well, those will be your alternate interior angles. Here we go. Look at the diagram. So whenever you see one of these diagrams, just make a Z, and you see how those two red angles, the two Z angles, are your alternate interior. So that'll, that'll help. We'll see, you'll see when we get to the fancy ones, I'll go, see, look for the Z. Boom, those two, alternate interior, and they've got to be equal. All right. Question at the bottom of the page. What 
to the angles in a triangle. So we're totally changing gears. Any questions on that so far? What if you have a triangle? What are the three angles? So we're totally shifting gears now. No more two lines with the transversal. Just move into triangles. What are the three angles in a triangle add up to be? Yeah, do you know that fact already? Exactly. Do you remember that from your geometry days? Here's a little theorem saying exactly what y'all just said. I don't have time right here. I wish I did. I, I might in the future. Probably, probably not. I'm a dreamer about time and all the amazing things I'm going to do with time. You'll, you'll see. You'll know that of me more as time goes on. I always think I'm going to do great things. But uh, the reality, but if, but if you add time when you teach younger folks, it's great. And I have done it in the past as I've taught this class years ago. I have taken time sometimes to just make, just draw a big old triangle or just cut one out of me on it. Just take a big piece of paper, make, um, tell people to make any kind of triangle they want. Like, that's, that's a pretty normal one. Make weird old triangles if you want, like that one, you know? Or, you know, make a right triangle if you want, whatever. Make any triangle you want, cut it out, you know, a big, big old piece of paper, big old triangle, and then just rip out the three corners. See how they're showing that in this little diagram? They're just ripping out, ripping out, ripping out the three corners. And then piece those three corners together. So after you rip out the three corners of the triangle, piece them all together, and guess what they'll make? Straight line, because they total 180. Yeah, no matter how normal or weird the original triangle is. If you rip out the three corners, rip out the three corners, and put them all together, they will always make a straight line. So you can physically see. It's real nice to physically see that the three angles always do make a straight line on the triangle. They always total 180. Okay. So the three angles in any triangle total 180. We're going to get some mileage out of that fact. We're going to take that one fact and we're going to run with that ball all the way down the field. So I know Super Bowl's guy. I got to make whatever analogies <laughs> that'll work here. Why? We're going to do a whole bunch of, we're going to go far logically from that one fact. This is a beautiful demonstration of how we can run with logic. All right, so here's our goal. Let, let me tell you our goal before we get there. Uh, in the next 10 minutes, maybe 15, what we want to be able to do eventually is to take any, any um, polygon. And so like, say I just make up a shape here. Um, let, let me make up a perfect... Um, eight-sided, you know, octagon. So uh, there's probably no way I can draw that. <laughs> Let me see. No, I'm, I'm I'm not a good drawer anyway. I got it. My my art career ended in the seventh grade with a C, and I was trying. I don't think Mr. Duran appreciated my artistic style. Um, all right, so, uh, yeah, I'm, you see, I can't even do it. Is it so I'm going to, okay, it's going to come out something different than eight sides, maybe. maybe. All right, there we go. Well, I don't, how many sides did I get there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Hey, I did get eight. All right. Anyway, we'll, we'll pretend that's perfect. So that's a perfect eight-sided shape. Here's my question. How big is each of the angles? Each of these angles in a perfect eight-sided shape. How big is it? And not only an eight-sided shape, I want a formula for, in, for a perfect in-sided. I would like us to be able to come up with a formula, something like, you know, 7n minus 3 all divided by 2n or whatever, and you know, that's not it. But some crazy formula so that we could just take, if somebody says, okay, we have a, a 20-sided shape, a perfect 20-sided shape, and um, just plug in the 20. And this magic formula, poof, it'll tell you how big each of the angles is in a 20-sided shape. Or you could plug it in for the 8-sided shape as well. And you can that quick find out how big the angles are in a perfect any, any shape. That seems like a tall order, doesn't it? Like, how are we going to do that? Here we go. All right, let's start with a 4-sided. We're just going to build up logic here. So that's just a quadrilateral, this first picture up here. This is a quadrilateral, four sides, and there's nothing special. It's certainly not perfect, is it? 
just just any old four sided shape. We're just going to start with any old four sided shape. Whoops, didn't mean to scribble there. Four sided shape. So the question is, what are the total degrees in that shape? How, like like all these angles here. What must all four angles add up to be? Is there some way we could? So remember, our our goal is to eventually be able to come up with a formula for any inside perfect object to find each angle. But let's get there by starting with just a four-sided shape, any old four-sided shape. So how do we know? Do we did I hear an answer already? How do we know? Tammy, how do we know? Um, well, if you plug, if you look at what's asked for, it says equals blank times 180. You can see that there's two triangles right there. It has to be two times 180. Beautiful. Right? Does everybody see that? We're basically, by putting in this diagonal line, we're realizing, oh, a four-sided shape is just made out of two triangles, isn't it? So it's two 180s, right? Do you see that? In other words, this angle, this angle, and this angle, the three angles of the top triangle, combined with this angle, this angle, and this angle, the three angles of the bottom triangle, right? The 180, right? The top triangle has 180 total, and the bottom triangle has 180, because we saw any triangle, the three angles in any triangle total 180, right? You could rip out the three corners and put them together, they'll make a straight line. So, okay, well then a four-sided shape is just made out of two triangles, isn't it? Remember, we're going to use that one triangle fact, and we're going to go a long way, all the way to the perfect formula we're looking for. So two times 180, what is that, 360? Yeah. Good. Now, let's go to five sides. So here we are on a, again, that's not perfect. We're not doing perfect shapes yet. We'll get to those later. So we're just starting. That's any old pentagon, isn't it? Any old five-sided object. So what must be the total degrees in that five-sided object? How do we figure it out? See what we're doing? We're taking one point and then just shooting out to the other points, making triangles. So how many triangles in a five-sided, in a pentagon? Yeah, there's three triangles, huh? Three times 180, what is that, 540? 540. Six sides. So again, we start with one point, and we just shoot out the diagonals to the other points. How many triangles we got there? Four, what's that, 720? Must be the total. So now, so now insides. Can I give you a second? What needs to go here? Cammie. Uh, N minus 2 times Yeah. Is everybody getting that? Right? Because you can just look at the pattern, right? 4 becomes 2. 5 becomes 3. 6 becomes 4. So N becomes N minus 2. Right? We're just subtracting 2 every time, aren't we? So it's got to be N minus 2 times 180. And there's nothing more we can do with that. I mean, you know, you can, I mean, if you want, you can write N minus 2 times 180, but... That's all we can do. I'm not, I'm not going to distribute the 180 or anything. I don't really care. Just leave it like that. N minus 2 times 180. That's, that's a formula, isn't it, for the total degrees in any insided object. Somebody could say, all right, I have, a, I have an octagon, eight sides. What's the total of all the degrees? So let's go back to our octagon. Remember this octagon? Wait, where was it? There it was. So, so now we, we can find the total. We still cannot find what each angle is. Are you seeing what we have and what we don't have? We're not there yet. We'll get there. We're almost there. We know the total of all angles, right? What's the total? N minus 2 times 180. For any inside object, the total of all the angles is N minus 2 times 180. So you could plug in 8 for N because an 8-sided object, right? And then you would get whatever, 8 minus 2 times 180. What's that? 6 times 180. And just hit the buttons, whatever your calculator says. That would be the total degrees of all the angles in an octagon. Good. Now, you can probably see where we're going. Next page, perfect shapes. So, that, so the first page, that was just any old... Four-sided, five-sided, six-sided shape. Nothing perfect there. Now, perfect pentagon, perfect hexagon. And we want to be able to find each angle when they're all perfect, when they're all the same. So how can we find what each of the angles is 
in a perfect pentagon. How big is the opening, the angle, the interior angle in a perfect pentagon? Well, you know what to do, right? Pick any old point and start shooting out diagonals to make triangles. Because we know every triangle holds 180. We're getting a lot of mileage out of that fact. So how many triangles in a perfect pentagon or any pentagon? 3 times 180, which is 540, like it was a minute ago. 540. So how much then is each of these five angles since they're each the same in a perfect shape? Yeah, just take that and divide by 5, huh? Is that 108? Look at that. So we're able to find that each angle is all these, all five of these are 108, aren't they? All five of the angles in a perfect pentagon must be 108 degrees. We found out by logic. We didn't even measure it. That's pretty impressive that we know how big the opening is in a five-sided shape by perfect logic. Can you do it for the six-sided shape? So figure it out for the six-sided. How many, how many triangles? So remember, you just pick one point. It doesn't matter what point you pick. and just start shooting diagonals to uh, make triangles. So how many triangles we got in there? Four triangles, right? One, two, three, four triangles. So four, 180, what's that, 720? Okay, and then therefore, that's the total of all the angles inside. So what must each of these angles be when there's six of them that are all equal? Take 720 divided by 6, huh? Is that 120? So each of the angles must be 120 degrees in a perfect hexagon. Finally, here we are. This is where we wanted to be. What if we have insides? A per now, re we call these regular polygons. So remember, regular means perfect. I, again, I think I'm always wanting to rename everything. I think they used the wrong name. They should have used perfect because that's what regular polygon means. Perfect polygon. So in a perfect polygon, a regular polygon where all the sides and angles are the same, if you have insides, what's going to be the measure of each angle? Can you reason it out with your... All right, you guys got a conclusion? So first off, if you have insides, what, what are you going to multiply by 180? N minus 2, right? That's what we got last time, right? 5 becomes 3, 6 becomes 4, just like 4. So N becomes N minus 2. So this is N minus 2 times 180. That we already knew from the last page, right? N minus 2 times 180. But now, what is each? Into, if, if there's N angles and they're all the same because it's a regular shape, perfect shape, how big is each angle? What are we going to do? Yeah, just take that formula which is the total of all the angles, and divide by n, right? Because they're all the same. There's n of them all the same. There it is. That wasn't hard, was it? We've got a formula that'll find out each angle in a perfect, any-sided shape we want. So we could do the octagon now with that formula. Let me go over here, and I'm just going to scribble. Well, maybe I'll... The next page is homework. So let me come up here. Well, here, I can just go here. I'll go through all the homework. Here we go. Um, so, so we have the formula n minus 2 times 180 over n, right? So if I have a, what is it, 8-sided eight, eight octagon, and if it's a regular, it's a regular octagon, meaning all the sides are the same, all the angles are the same, what is each angle going to be? Well, n minus 2 times 180 over n just plug in the 8. So pop in the 8 there, pop in the 8 there. Get 8 minus 2 times 180 over 8. Hit the buttons on your calculator. 6 times 180 over 8. I don't know. What is that? 135? Is that it? I'm sort of half guessing. Did I get it? Is it 135? 90, 45 times 3. Yeah, that is it, huh? 135. Yeah, so, so we were able to find each angle in a perfect octagon. It's got to be 130. We can do any, any sided object now with that formula. All from the logic of a triangle holding 180. Do you like that? That's what I enjoy about math. I enjoy that math can build things through perfect logic like that. 
All right, so let's use that in our homework. Here we go. It's homework time. Now, let me give you a, um, I changed this homework assignment from what I sent you on the PDF. Sorry, I just realized it an hour ago, or about half an hour ago. Um, yeah, so it, it's the same questions, it's just different numbers. So it won't, it won't mess you up much. It's exactly the same question, but instead of 60, 70, they might have 50, 80, you know, on the one I sent you. The other ones are all good. The other ones I didn't change. I, cha I pulled out, uh, there was too much homework. I pulled out questions, I changed it, and then I, you have the old copy. I forgot about that. So anyway, it'll be the same questions, just different numbers. So uh, from the PDF I sent you for this section only. All right, so um, we have these triangles, and we want to find the missing angle. Can you do that real quick? Find this angle, find this angle. What are we going to do? Why don't you talk? Find the missing angles in the triangle? Yeah. Just add up what you got, 130, and subtract from 180, because every triangle holds 180, right? You, if you take the three angles of a triangle, rip them out, put them together, they make a straight line. So it's got to be 50? Right there. What about the other one? What's, what's this angle? Yeah, 90, huh? And 45. 135, subtract from 180. It's got to be 45. So the missing one here is 50. This one's 45. Great. Coming on down, number two, the measure of angle A is 33 degrees. Find its complement. Find its complement. Remember, now remember what complement and supplement were? Complement, complementary angles total 90. Supplementary angles make a straight line total 180, don't they? So they're basically saying, hey, um, you've got a 33 degree angle here. What's the other one? What's the complement? So we just subtract from 90, don't we? 33, what's that? 57. And then the second part, they're saying, hey, we have, uh, you know, you have that 33 degree angle. What's the other one to make 180? What's the supplement? So just subtract from 180. These will be easy for you, I think. One, what's that, 147? 147. I'll move on. So there's the same question, 57, 147, 57, 147. And then finally, the third part <clears throat> says find the vertical angle. So if you have angle A is 33 degrees, what's the measure of the angle vertical to it? Remember what vertical angles are? They're, it means diagonal, and they're always equal. It's just the same. You don't need to do anything at all. It's just going to be 33. No calculation needed. They're just making sure you know. Vertical angles are the same, exactly equal. All right, part B, same thing. Now they want us to do it with a letter. That's a lot of what they'll do, and that's good. I think the book is, is, good, is, is written well, the way they're laying out the problems. Have us reason with numbers and then reason with letters. Letters are just numbers we don't currently know, huh? The logic is the same. So, so how do we find, if, if your angle is Z, instead of, you know, 33, it's Z, how do you find the complement? Yeah, nine. remember what we did? We just subtracted from 90. So do the same thing with the Z, 90 minus Z. Next, how do we find the supplement? You know, 180 minus Z. And last, how do you, what's the vertical angle? Well, just Z. You don't do anything. Vertical angles are the same. All right, I'm going to move rapidly along because there's hard, hard ones coming. I want to get to those. If it's too fast, though, it'll be on YouTube. Me what is the measure of the complement of the supplement of 151? So now they're, they're giving us a kind of a compound question. They're trying to be tricky. The complement of the supplement of 151 degrees. They are being a little tricky. How do we do that? Where should we start? Yeah. Perfect. Good, good, Fatima. Yeah, start, start with the supplement, huh? Right? Start with the supplement. So we'll do supplement of 151. So that'll be, what is that? Um, 29. 
So that's 29. And then step back to the complement, because you want the complement of that. So that'll be, what, 90 minus 29, which will equal, what's that, 61? And you might have, you probably have different numbers on your PDF, but same, same problem. Make sense there? We just did both steps like that? How about number four? If x and 17x plus 36 are measures of complementary angles, what, what's each angle? How can we do that? x and 17x plus 36, they're complementary. The 17x plus 30, oh, I forgot the x, didn't I? <laughs> 17x plus 36 is 90. Is that good? Plus x? Plus another x? Yeah, that's right, right? Because this is one angle. And this is the other, right? 17x plus 36 is just one of the angles, and x is the other, huh? So we've got to have both those together add up to be 90, don't we? Does that make sense? It's easy to look at the 17x plus 36 and think it's two things because it's got two parts, but it's actually one thing, isn't it? It's actually one of the two angles, the other one being just an x. Good. So yeah, so there's our formula. And this makes us harken back to our algebra days. How were your algebra days? Were those some of the best days of your life? Algebra? Not always. I, I don't always get that response. But some people had, I had good algebra days. Probably why I'm a math teacher. I had a really good algebra teacher. Anyway, uh, remember how to do the algebra thing? Uh, they want us to get X alone there. So uh, X, is, X is always yelling out, I want to be alone. Get rid of all this stuff with me so I can be alone. That's what solving for X is all about. So how do we get X alone there? What do we do? first to solve this equation. Yeah, yeah, we're going we're gonna to do that. How about we do something with the x's first? But, but you really, you could do that first. You're totally right. But I just, out of habit, like to do the x's first. How will we combine those two? Yeah, what number's really in front of this first x? Yeah, it's invisible one. Remember all that stuff from algebra? Yeah, so 1x and 17x makes 18x. Right. And then we do what Silvino was saying. Now we get rid of the 36, right? Because X wants to be alone. So we subtract the 36. Exactly. These cancel. Then you bring down the 18X. What is that? Um, 54. Okay. What's the last step to get X alone? Yeah. How do you know? You're totally right. How do you know you divide instead of like subtract 18? Because it's, it's times, huh? That's times. When there's nothing between the 18 and x, that means multiply and the opposite of multiply is divide. We're always doing the opposite, huh? Yeah. So divide by the 18. Is that like 3? So 3. x is 3. Now let's answer the question. The measure of x is 3 degrees. So then what's the other one? How do we find the other angle? Yeah, you can plug it in right there. 17 times 3 plus 36, what's that, uh, 30, 51, plus 36, 87, 87. What's the other thing we could have done? Just subtracted 3 from 90. Yeah, just because they have to add it to 90, right? They're complementary. We could have just subtracted from 90. Either way is good. Same answer either way. Does that make sense? Remember that algebra? We won't do a lot of algebra. That's probably about as much as we'll, we'll do. All right, let's do, see what we can do. We've got a couple minutes on number five here. Use the figures to determine whether the indicated lines are parallel. Indicate why or why not. So now we're getting into these more complex, which we'll do a bunch of on Friday. So, all right, so we got a couple of lines, each of these. Let's do case A. So looking up here at case A, and they're saying, are M and N parallel lines? Why or why not? So remember, remember what we learned. If this line and this line are parallel... If they are parallel, they look parallel, but if they really are parallel, then the, a whole bunch of different angles are equal, right? The Z angles are equal, the corresponding angles are equal. So what's going to be best to do is just start figuring out the angles in these pictures and see if they are coming out equal like they should. So, for example, if this one's 118, 
Do we know this one right here? It's got to be the same thing, doesn't it? Remember, diagonal angles are equal. So this one would have to be 118 also. Okay. Actually, we don't even need that, do we? Yeah. Couldn't you just add them together and see if it's 180? Yeah, you're, you're totally right. You're totally right. I mean, that is 118, but who cares? I didn't realize we didn't even need that. Yeah, what about this one? This is the one we should get, huh? What's that one have to be? Whatever 180 minus 118 is, because together they make a straight line, right? They're at the top of that straight line. So 180 minus 118. Can't get that. There we go. 118. And what does that come out to be? Indeed, it is 62. So then upper right, upper right, yeah. It's all working perfectly. See how those corresponding angles are coming out equal? They're both the upper right corners of their intersections. So if those are equal, those lines have got to be parallel, don't they? Everybody see what we did there? How about B in our last minute? Can you do the same thing on B? So, oh, I didn't do the yes here. Yes, because alternate interior angles are 62. Um, yes, because vertical angles are not congruent. Now, that's a crazy statement. Yes, because alternate interior angles are 62. How about B? Can we do the same thing on B? Can we find, for example, like this angle down here? Together, these two make the right side of a straight line, don't they? So they've got a total 180, don't they? So this one has got to be whatever 180 minus 76 is, which is, no surprise, 104. So that one's working too, isn't it? The lower right corner, lower right corner, Corresponding angles are equal. That one's going to be a yes. And we'll 